Good Monday, makers, and Happy New Year. Hope everybody's having a good 2023 so far. I'm joined with Dave. Hey, everybody. Happy New Year. We've got eight great builds. I'm excited to show them to you, so let's jump in and start checking them out. First build we have this week is from Compass Custom Creations on Instagram, and you might remember a few weeks ago they did the concrete side table, which is really cool, and they normally do builds for customers, but this one was for a personal build. And they're based out of Kentucky, if you can't tell. Uh, I'm bo I was born in Kentucky, so I, I like to see the, the UK uh, Kentucky banner, uh, even though we're He's not doing He's a fan, it. too. Yeah, it, it's tough. We're not doing so well this year, but it's okay. But they did a great build, and this is a treadmill stand that they built. And the top shelf is supposed to hold a laptop, and the, the shelf down here holds a fan, which is, uh, is really cool. I'm a fan of this build. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Um, Look at this, 2023 fitness goals right here. This is where it all starts with the the treadmill platform. Yeah, for sure. It, it seems like a great addition. We've had a couple people do this in the past. And, you know, if you're you're running on a treadmill inside and you just stare at the wall, if you don't really listen to music or anything, you know, putting a laptop up here and, and even if you're walking on it and like are able to do some work, people like to do like walking um, or like, you know, walking treadmills while working and stuff. But Put a movie on there. I mean, anything to pass the time while running. So that's a nice addition to have. have the something fan like is that. key too. Oh yeah, you know, because on on a treadmill, having that like if you're outdoors, obviously you got the air moving past you. So the fan makes a big difference. Definitely. Um, so it's a fantastic build. I think <laughs> they used all. <laughs> uh, Dave's making fun of my adjectives this morning. Fan. Fantastic. Oh, fantastic. Oh, wow. I missed it. Yeah. You're making puns you don't even know. I know. It just comes so naturally. <laughs> but fantastic build. Uh, I think it's all T connectors, which is cool. It's got the, the pipes here that run parallel to the uh, treadmill. And then there's verticals that go up. And then there's uh, some pipes at the top that support the, the shelf. And then kind of the same thing here, except the, the T connectors oriented sideways to send the pipes across. And then the boards attached, I imagine, with one hole straps. Um, but yeah, really nice build. And uh, if you're around the Kentucky area and want some custom builds, Compass Custom Creations does, um, uh, what's it called? When, uh, commissions. Uh, they do commissions and different builds and things. So, oh, neat. Yeah, definitely check them out. But really appreciate them sharing that build on Instagram. It's really cool. And the next one we've got is from Peter. And this is an interesting one. This is uh, shelves to display some vintage office items, specifically the typewriters. As you can see here, there's uh, a lot of cool stuff on this shelf. The typewriters, of course, but you also got some, you know, some tape holders, lamps, staplers, and just all kinds of cool vintage office items that Peter wanted to display. So he made these shelves, and apparently you can actually split this in half. So like you can see where the the wood is, um, you know, split going down the side, and you can combine this, uh, you know, side by side if you want, or like he has it in the corner. You know, it just goes into the corner. Uh, so that was really neat. And the way he built it was basically just running verticals through all the wood planks. It just drilled a hole using like a one-inch hole saw. works well. Uh, and the pipe just runs all the way through it. And then interestingly, he's got the, the flanges upside down. And because the way those are designed, they have kind of a clamp design. There's two pieces. You can orient them on a pipe pretty much anywhere along a vertical pipe. And that's what he did to be able to support the shelves, uh, which is a really good technique to keep in mind if you're doing shelves. Uh, and that's basically how he did every support for each of the shelves. That's uh, great. This is one of the first that I've seen uh, used like that. Yeah, I think and so. I, I think when we were coming up with the flange, that was one of our, you know, um, wish list items, you mm -hmm. know, that the pipe could go through it and it could be used to support a shelf. So it's great to see somebody using it like that. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's a really good way. I think with it having the flat top, um, you know, as flat of a base as it does to, to provide some extra support there. I think it's a great technique. Patrick says, I remember typing class in grade nine. Nice collection. <laughs> That's cool. Kelly um, and I met in typing class. Oh, really? Well, I we met in study hall, but we had typing class together. That's where we really got to know each other. Oh. I we did not have those typewriters, though, We the computers. I guess you were each other's type. <laughs> Uh, yep. Yep. Starting the year, <laughs> starting the year off great, nice. Uh, but yeah, that's that's cool. I didn't know that. I knew you guys met in school, but I didn't know that it was in typing yeah, class. Typing class was critical. That's cool. 
Uh, this is a, a great build, and uh, I love. I think he said he shouted out the wood shop that he got this from, uh, Anderson Plywood on Sepulveda Boulevard in Los Angeles, and the guy there rounded the corners and everything. So that's something to keep in mind. You might check with uh, local, you know, wood suppliers to see if they'll do some cutting for you. Actually, that is one thing. If you don't know, you can go to Lowe's and Home Depot, and I don't think they'll do anything fancy like round the corners, but they do actually cut wood for you. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, you're, <laughs> you can get basic cuts. Yeah. But uh, don't ask them to do any routing or <laughs> extra Engraving jigsaw. or wood burning or, no. you know, any artisan. <laughs> but it is a good thing to keep in mind, you know, if you build your pipe structure and you just use the few hand tools that you need you don't have any power tools or just don't even want to break out the power tools you can go buy just a board um and from them and they, they'll they cut it for you and into basic dimensions for shelves and desks and uh, it's a really great thing to keep in mind that is super handy yeah, yeah for sure well awesome collection peter thanks so much for sharing it and uh and it's cool to see your shell Next up is a bill. This one was kind of hidden. Uh, so recently, Joshua asked in the Facebook community if anybody had any issues with rust on the fittings, uh, just wanting to build something and was asking. And uh, Zach posted this in the comments and going on three years, no rust yet, which is great to hear. And I was just blown away at how massive of a structure this is. And we've yeah. never really seen it before. But apparently this is a quail pin built by Zach. And it just looks really awesome. It's, I mean, it's massive. Um, and you can see... Here they've basically got a large radius. Like I would, it, this has to be like two ten foot pipes combined, um, maybe even three. Because I mean, it, at least the way it looks, it looks like it's it's just really really wide. Um, but they've got the like large radius pipe going over the top, and then they've got basically added ribs to the roof using crossover clamps, and uh, that's a good way to do that because you, you're able to keep this one continuous span while still adding support. Uh, which is great. And then at the bottom here, this is where they used uh, the maker pipe T. Uh, they've got, it looks like a pipe secured to this wooden railing with two hole straps. And then they've got the T connector attached to that pipe. And then it goes up and goes around and is secured. And it looks like that same design all the way down. Got some sort of netting over the top. And uh, yeah, just a, a really awesome build. I thought the floor was interesting because it looks like it's mesh floor mm -hmm. that's elevated from the grass. I don't know if that's to to not kill the grass or you harvest, you know, quail manure from mm -hmm. it. I don't know. We are not quail farmers. In fact, this is the first quail, I, I mean, quail enclosure I've ever seen. Yeah, we're definitely not quailified to speak on such a matter. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. <laughs> oh, man. That's the one I thought over on the drive. So on the way over here, I was oh, okay. thinking about a pun. That you I, had that queued up because yeah. that's pretty uh, That's pretty technical. But, yeah, but that you did a, tee me up pretty well because you said we're not, we're not, what did you say? Uh, I've never, I don't that I never seen, have seen one before. I was or? like, the tee up was perfect because you were oh, like, we, I don't even know what that is. We're not an expert on yeah, yeah. these matters or something like that. Oh, was perfect. Man. Yeah, thanks. Walked right into it. Thanks for the tee up. <laughs> but great build zach and uh it's really cool to hear going on three years with no rust um that's a that's a good thing to keep in mind steel pipe or galvanized pipe is galvanized so it's corrosion resistant and all of the fittings both silver and black are corrosion resistant so unless they get bumped or you know scratched pretty heavily shouldn't have to worry about about rust right of course there's exceptions but and they're they're steel so we do our best to coat them and they they're good quality coatings but again, like Jake's saying, if it gets nicked or something, you will develop a little bit of surface rust because there's steel underneath, right? Yeah. Um, but it's great to see that customers are having them out in the elements for years and years, and they're holding up great. That's what you really want. For sure. I just thought of something cool. I don't know if we'd be able to do this, but it would be cool. You know, we make all the parts here in America, uh, in our shop in South Carolina, and uh, we use local suppliers for a lot of stuff, including the um, coatings. And it would be cool if we could maybe get like a tour not a tour maybe but they could like we could do a video where we show how each the silver and black parts are coated and like the process of how they get you know the, the bath and everything like that oh yeah i think that that would be really valuable for people yeah and cool to show yeah for sure i've also thought you know hey let's make these out of stainless mm. you know and see what happens just source some stainless steel and i think our process would work for that too if there's any interest for that, I, I know we've talked to some folks that have done um, 
you know, marine builds, mm. things on boats. Um, you know, that could be something interesting too. So if you would like to see that, let us know. Yeah, for sure. That'd be cool. All right. Great build, Zach. Thanks for posting that in the comments. And uh, yeah, great build. Next up is a, a build from our good friend Axel. Uh, he's actually local to us, and he has a YouTube channel, Axe Maniac, and where he does all kinds of fishing and kayak um, videos. And recently did a project. He said this is a generic design for a kayak swivel seat frame. And he uh, said this was installed on a bona fide SS127 kayak. I don't know what that means, but if you're into kayaks, you probably do. He even included a parts list, which is cool. But you can see here what he's done is basically, I'm really intrigued by this part here i'd imagine this is made for the kayak i mean obviously it, it should be made for the kayak this black kind of um, like an adjustable seat mount yeah like it's some kind of seat mount that's made for this type of kayak and then he i think it's a i think what it is is it's a set seat it's like you can't move it around and so that's why he wanted to make it a swivel adjustable mm -hmm. so it's got this mount one on each side and the pipe just sits in there nicely just four t connectors total and you can see where he drilled holes through the pipe and then that's where he added a bolt through and into the seat platform. Nice. Yeah, nice and nice and uh, it looks great. And I think that's a you know good technique to keep in mind, just drilling through the pipe to secure things to it. Um, you know, a lot of times you know thinking about like one hole straps or securing stuff to pipe, but we've seen a few builds recently where drilling through the pipe is the best option. Um, and I think especially with a small diameter, mm -hmm. you know, it, obviously the you know, the pipe's an inch. If you have a three quarter inch bit and drill out most of the pipe wall, you're going to severely compromise the strength of it. But, mm -hmm. you know, putting just a quarter inch hole, eighth inch hole to run some hardware through, um, could be a good option without compromising the strength of the pipe yeah, entirely. For sure. Not, I mean, you're going to be sitting on this, mm -hmm. so it needs to be that strong, but you, 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 you could probably get away with it. Definitely. Especially too, I think, if something like, like I, I imagine the seat base probably had these holes pre-drilled in the platform. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you're looking to mount something that already has holes, that's a, that's a good option. Because otherwise you'd have to put like a conduit hanger strap or something like that. Yeah, or go through a, a connector or something like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of ideas there. But no shortage of creative ideas from Axel. Uh, again, if you're into kayaks or just have an interest in that, check him out. He's got an awesome channel. A lot of cool ideas. Definitely. I think he says he's going to follow this up with a uh, this another post with a um, yep. He post, post a build when the uh, or post the build video when he's finished editing. Um, so that'd be cool. So if you want to see this, definitely check out his channel and subscribe, and you'll see it when it comes out. But thanks, Axel. Another great project. Really appreciate you sharing it. Next build is from Gary, and uh, he sent in a few different builds that he made recently. Actually, made these in the summer, um, but just shared them. And this is, uh, first, we'll look at, he's got these raised garden beds here, and he made these oh, nice. tingible garden enclosures. And right. I always love seeing these. If yeah, you, who did we see these from? Was, it was Leslie out in the desert, right? I think so. Was mm -hmm. it Leslie, his name? I think so. Yeah, he did sure. an interview. He did a great job, and these look great, too. Yeah, I, I think so. I think Maybe Kelly... It might have been Kelly. I'm not sure. But it was in, out in the desert, did something similar. And if you have a raised garden bed and you have plants that, you know, it's common that people build a six foot tall enclosure or trellis if they've got climbing plants. But I imagine, I don't know exactly what plants these are. Strawberry. So, strawberries, I don't think, grow very tall. So, something like this that's just kind of low to the ground and compact, but still protects it, is, is a nice way to do garden protection. And uh, we don't really see a close-up of the hinge, but since this is attached, it looks like flush with the board. I would imagine it's probably something simple like, you know, two-hole straps or maybe even some of those like PVC gate hinges. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. We have a whole video on hinges um, you can check out on the channel for different ideas. But, but basically, it's just, uh, you know, a square enclosure. It looks like 90-degree connectors to make the, the square, and then they just attach the enclosure material or the chicken wire, whatever it is on the outside. And then basically they can just raise and lower this, um, to, you know, to access the plants or to cover them up and protect them. Nice. Yeah. Is there a support when, can you see it when it's standing upright or open? Is there a support that goes down to the ground? I don't see one. It looks like there's a pipe running from on top of the board there. You can imagine where you just have a, an extra pipe coming off mm. and it would act like legs 
in the up position. Can you imagine that? I see, like maybe back here? Yeah, back there. Oh, okay. So it just like when you had it in the mm. up position, it was actually resting on the ground. Oh, nice. That would be a, a slick little thing. Oh, uh, yeah. I could see too, maybe if you had like a pipe coming off there and there, and then you did a pipe uh, going along the ground, you mm -hmm. could use that as the handle to lift it up. Mm -hmm. And then maybe, you know, like, you know, pull it towards you. Oh, well, you probably want to lift. Yeah, that might be tough with the leverage, but true. Uh, you could do it on both sides and then have a handle on the other side. But uh, I like this design. It seems like a great solution for something that's low. Yeah, for sure. It seems like a, a great, great idea. And we've had a couple of people do something similar in the past. Um, after the live stream, I'll, I'll update the description and put a link to that interview Dave was talking about. Um, there's also another NPM. I think it was called like Strawberry Prison? Question <laughs> mark? Because somebody called a build similar to this a Strawberry Prison. Uh, yeah, that was clever. Um, but you can check those out for more resources. But another build that Gary did uh, was this stand for, I believe it's for growing onions, which is interesting. Oh wow! Um, and basically just built this kind of elevated stand. And I like this technique for holding the soil in place. Basically, just draped some of this, um, oh, like wow, gardening no vinyl or something. Yeah. Um, and just kind of draped it, and then let it uh, droop down a little bit, and then use the um, conduit cover clips. Uh, it looks like they have some like metal reinforcement bands on them, uh, which I imagine to hold up all this soil, you probably need some, you know, make sure they're really strong. Um, basically, just drooped over the pipes, and then the, these clips are all that's really holding it in place. But since they kind of droop down a little bit, just all the soil is inside, and uh, that's where the onions are going to grow. So, really, uh, really great idea for for something like that, like an elevated raised bed um, that you don't have to like put any wood or anything on. Mm, um, yeah. Looks like just a few connectors, uh, just CTs and 90s in the corners, and then some kind of uh, base there. Um, that's a great build. And then the third project he shared was this little sculpture Whoa. he made. What and is that? He said it. the only reason he made it was just because he had some friends over who wanted to hear about MakerPipe, and so he just built this <laughs> Yeah, just built this little structure to, to showcase MakerPipe and the different connectors that he had on hand. So I thought that was cool that he shared that. Yeah, thanks for sharing that with your friends. Yeah, for sure. Glad so, you find it useful. Yeah. But great builds and looks awesome. And uh, yeah. oh, oh, I almost forgot that this tarp here is from a website called BillboardTarps.com, and you can buy old Billboard vinyl and like use it for stuff. And I think we saw somebody else recently who oh, did wow. this. And I think this is a great resource to keep in mind um, if you need you know plastic or material like this. I think somebody did a uh, used it for their canopy recently. For some okay. reason. So like if uh, I think I've seen this. Oh, there it goes. Where if um, you know someone has advertising, they use tarps mm -hmm. now, right? And it's just they throw them away, and and this is ups upcycling. Right, and this company BillboardTarps.com is who he referenced. Uh, looks like they have new stuff as well, pond liners, um, and then I think where is the maybe the clearance items? Um, you never know. Are, are they new? solid colors? I think so. Or are you getting like uh, some sort of <laughs> advertisement? Oh, here it is. Reused billboard vinyl. I see a Coca-Cola one there, it looks like. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah. That's kind of wild. So like 170 bucks for a 20 by 60. I mean, that seems like a good... That's pretty big. Yeah, a good price. Water-resistant, UV-protected, tear-resistant, pipe sleeves. That's good for conduit. Huh. Um, so, yeah, it seems like a great resource. I'm glad he shared this. Um, seems like something to keep in mind if you're doing i think this would work well for a canopy or something um <laughs> see i mean they're using it for storage but there it is over like a hoop house <laughs> casino and hotel <laughs> uh, we should buy one of, like from this company and do see, a build yeah see what we get yeah that'd be fun yeah it would be really cool what but would you want to make out of it i don't know maybe just like a canopy or something um i don't know hmm. would be cool though that would be fun yeah, keep them in mind if you need a, a large uh, tarp. It seems like a, a pretty good... I mean, he just got a black one. And uh, yeah, seems like a, a cool place to check out for that kind of a thing. But thanks so much, Gary, for sharing those builds. It's great to see. Nice. Thanks, Gary. Next up is a build from Jack, and this was shared in the Facebook group. And this was the... You might recognize this is the soccer goal frame. Apparently, he bought the soccer goal kit, built it all out. But instead of using it as a soccer goal... He has got it up against the house with a tarp, and he made a private bathroom to protect his chihuahuas from the weather. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So whenever he takes his chihuahuas out to use the restroom, uh, just to give him a little nice little area. That's As you can see, it's raining here. 
So the privacy. Keep them out of the elements. They get to go in their own little private soccer goal shaped bathroom. <laughs> oh, wow. I thought that was really cool. We've seen a lot of people repurposing the kits recently, which is awesome to see because um, we were kind of hoping that they would kind of do that for people, kind of let you have the connectors on hand with instructions for something, and then you could adapt it. We saw like the plant stand that used to be, or it's technically the desk kit, but it was turned into a plant stand side table. So it's cool to see people repurpose the kits. Um, but this is the soccer goal. It's just all T connectors. One of the first videos we ever put out on the channel was this soccer goal build um, a few years ago, or like two or three years ago, it doesn't matter. Um, but here it is Neat. being used as the Chihuahua shade. That's great. Yeah, really awesome, Jack. Thanks so much for uh, for sharing this. Really great to see. Next up is Joe's build, and this was a flat top grill that he made. Hey. I actually talked to him on the phone. Apparently, he ordered this uh, Blackstone flat top, and it was warped in shipping, so it didn't fit on the stand that they, I think, made it for. And so he asked them. They sent him a replacement, and they said they, he said they took care of him, but they just told him to keep this warped one. He could do whatever he wanted to with it, recycle uh -huh. it or whatever. So he called and was asking our opinion on repurposing it into a grill. I did share that I had some concerns with this open flame on the conduit because, you know, conduit, if it gets too hot, re releases some, you know, pretty bad fumes uh, that can be dangerous. So I did share that with him, and he said that he was going to sand down the pipes completely or just burn it off in a safe manner mm -hmm. uh, to be able to, to use it. So I just wanted to share that um, just if anybody had that same concern. But um, as you can see, it's just a simple stand. I think it's all one inch and basically just goes up and over the, the fire pit. And then it has some bracing on each side. And it's really just, I think, two, four, six, eight T connectors. And he just customized the height to fit exactly over top of this uh, fire nice. pit. And then just set the flat top on top. And now he's making some biscuits. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, it's cool that he had this and decided to, you know, repurpose it instead of just get rid of it. Um, and is able to use it for camping and stuff. May not even need the, the new one that they sent because I think this is a pretty good solution. But uh looks great. And... Um, Always nice to have a, a big, I mean, that's a big cooktop for camping, which is great. So, sure. Yeah. Thanks so much, uh, Joe, for sharing that. Looks awesome. Yeah. Oh, that looks great. Yeah. It's really cool. Awesome to see. All right. Next build is from Terrence, and he's got a classic truck. And speaking of rust and pipes, he actually <laughs> did it on purpose. <laughs> what? To match the aesthetic of this truck. He's got, I always love oh, when they cool. do is this these. this a Suburban? This oh, is no. a, I think it's a Chevy, but it's uh like just a classic crew, truck. Crew cab, mm -hmm. dually. Yeah. And I love it when people do these, um, you know, like restorations of these trucks, but leave the paint original. And at least it looks original. That thing is great. Yeah. I love that. It's With nice. the cab there. Mm -hmm. That cab's like just an aluminum or stainless cab. Yeah. Really nice. And he just built a simple roof rack out of maker pipe. And it looks like he's similar to kind of what we saw with Jacob's Baja Bug roof rack. Uh, he got uh, a mount that fits in the channel um, of the window, above the window here, and then mounts the pipe and basically just built a simple rectangular frame using all T connectors with some cross braces. And something I liked about this is usually, you know, it might be building something and have to do a ton of pipes going across to be able to put stuff on top of the rack. But he's really using it to kind of hold uh, the, these suitcases and cases in between the pipes. <laughs> just set it right on the mm -hmm. roof. Why not? Yep. And then the bungee goes on the pipe and then just pulls it down and secures it to the uh, to the roof rack. And what are you going to rub the paint off? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right there. Um, but something that he did was made the pipes rusty, or these could just be like old iron pipes or something that fit inside because these are one inch connectors okay so maybe it could be just you know old rusty pipes that he had laying around i uh, was able to shim them to the connector or it looks like they just fit on there nice i don't know but i've never seen conduit that rusty so i feel like it has to be something um done on purpose oh yeah for sure um i don't know the price size. i'll have to ask i think he sent these through a facebook message which was cool that looks um, killer yeah for sure well Got done the, the long board is that a long board or just uh escape i don't know skateboard on there secured as well and uh yeah just really awesome build and just looks great on the truck thanks so much terrence for sharing that really great to see and i think that is all the builds we have for you this week thanks everybody for stopping by and joining in and uh the builds will be linked down below if you want to check them out in more detail really appreciate you hanging out with us and we hope everybody has a happy new year and a good week all right see you everybody